So, where we're at, we're at some kind of festival, Mr. Lewis. We are indeed uh, now. Uh, before we go into this, now am I working to you or am I working to the camera? I Either. mean, you're talking to a you pro can here. Or you can, yeah. Yes, camera, but which I guess, I'm talking. Okay, well, except that I'm talking to the folks as opposed to talking to you. Right, right. Where we are right now is outside the Egyptian theatre. In fact, you can probably see this beautiful mosaic. Well, it's me uh, probably even see a, an establishing shot here. I'm going to show our. A genteel blogger and cameraman here. The the words ground Egyptian. Uh, you want a little potted history. The Egyptian theatre was actually Hollywood's first movie palace. Was actually opened in 1922 uh, by Sid Grauman, the guy who later did the Chinese. But he started out on Egyptian. Uh, four years later, he opened the Chinese. The Egyptian theatre uh, was the home of Hollywood's first ever movie premiere. Uh, Robin Hood was the movie. Opened in November 22. Uh, in recent years, the film, this place, like Hollywood, went into a lot of disrepair. But ten years ago, the American Cinematheque, which is uh, America's leading non-profit organization that shows movies that need to be seen on the big screen, uh, uh, took over this place and uh, renovated it. It literally fallen into disrepair, and it is now uh, the home of the American Cinematheque. And so we show movies from around the world, we have film festivals, and tonight you're actually at the opening night. Well slightly before the end Whoa. of the night, I mean, you can see the masses of, the masses of, the masses of people, yes, um, yes. over three people in the courtyard yes, at the yes. moment, uh, well, it's a little bit early, but later tonight, there you are, let me scrub that thought, not tonight, but later tonight, there will be, well, probably Dozens. 200 million people thronged into this courtyard, of course you won't see it because you'll be inside with us watching the film, but um, this is going to be the opening night of the Mods and Rockers Film Festival, this is the ninth yeah, we've had the Mods and Rockers Film Festival, a celebration of rock culture in, on celluloid. And tonight, the opening night, is the world premiere of the film The Seventh Python, which is a documentary made by Bert Kearns uh, and Brett Hudson about a very dear friend of mine, Neil Innes. Neil Innes is the genius behind the music that you heard in Monty Python. The music for the Ruttles, which is the Monty Python spoof of the Beatles, uh, and of course the Bonzo Dog Band uh, from the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, Neil has been a friend of mine, gosh, since 1976. Uh, so uh, he's been, he was actually, his film debut was in Magical Mystery Tour, the Beatles film, 1967. He was the uh, a member of the Bonzo Dog Band. Paul McCartney put them in the film. They play in that strip club sequence. They're behind the stripper. You probably never noticed the band. You've been, when you watch the Beatles Magical Mystery Tour, you're focused, like most people, on the stripper. But in fact, behind the stripper is the Bonzo Dog Band. And they're doing a song, interestingly enough, for those of you younger than me, which is probably everybody watching this, uh, they're doing a song called Death Cab for Cutie. Hold on a moment, you say that's a hit indie band. Well, yes it is, but they got their name from the song co-written by Neil Innes, whose movie is the movie about is opening tonight. So uh, Neil Innes having this wonderful career, but never really been documented. I thought, how can you be possibly this most incredibly talented fellow, created the music that you hear in Monty Python and so on, but not enough people know about him. So Bert Kearns and Brett Hudson have made this amazing documentary. And when I heard about it, I saw a little bit of it. I said, we have to show this film opening night at the Mods and Rockers Film Festival. So that's why we're here. What was your question? So what else is going to be shown at the Mods and Rockers? Um, the festival, um, the Los Angeles Times said that we are now the largest single uh, rock music festival held in America every year. Uh, this year we're also having uh, the world premiere of uh, a film about, uh, we, no, it's the world theatrical premiere of a film about Sid Barrett and Pink Floyd, uh, Phil, the director's cut of a new film about Robin Hitchcock. We have a documentary that features the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Cream, Jimi Hendrix, The Who, Frank Zappa, Donovan, Eric Burden, uh, all in one film that was made in 1968 and could never be shown in America because they thought it was too seditious, um, which it is. Uh, so we're showing it here. Uh, that's a film called All My Loving. We also have a, uh, the premiere of a documentary about Arthur Lee's band Love. Uh, we also have a uh, special screening of A Hard Day's Night with Wonderwall. Wonderwall was the film that was uh, uh, created in 1968 with a score by George Harrison. Now, a lot of people say, Wonderwall, isn't that a single by Oasis? Well, yes, pretty much like Death Cab for Cutie uh, is an indie band. 
Wonder All was a film that George Harrison wrote this incredible Indian score for, and we're showing that film uh, here at the festival. And on top of that, we also have uh, a, a, an amazing series of films about Athens, Georgia. So which, if you're a fan of R.E.M. or B-52s or any great musicians came out of Athens, Georgia, you'll see that too. And we even have a website. What do you know? You can link straight from this. In fact, you're getting so bored with me. Why don't you ignore me now? Go to Mods and Rockers. I'm going to spell that because not everyone in America knows what a mod is or a rocker is. Mods, M-O-D-S and rockers. The Mods and Rockers were a teen subcult in the early 60s. They were kind of like the the, the greasers and uh, the rockers with the greasers and I don't know if you had the equivalent of mods in America. You were so old fashioned you didn't have the mods. What are mods? Mods were people, the, the two, if you see the movie Quadrophenia, uh, that was the battles. The, the, you know what, think of West Side Story, you know, like the Jets and the Sharks. Um, the mods were closer to the Jets. The mods were kids who loved scooters, Italian suits, mohair suits. They had short hair and very smart ties, and they used to go, um, uh, they used to have, uh, they had scooters, not motorbikes, uh, lambrettas, uh, and they were into soul music. The rockers were greasy, you had the leather, the slick back hair, and they were into Gene Vincent, Eddie Cochran, and Elvis. So they used to have fights on the beaches in England uh, in the early 60s. They, in fact, there's a great moment in the movie A Hard Day's Night because that was the height of the modern rock era. In the um, in the press conference scene, a beautiful young journalist goes up to Ringo Starr and said, are you a mod or a rocker? And Ringo says very memorably, neither, I'm a mucker. Uh, and that's what it... Now, these are shoes as warm they're pretty bad actually they're torn up these are winkle pickers these were the shoes worn by teddy boys teddy boys preceded the mods and rockers they were in the 50s john lennon was a teddy boy these shoes are as you can see are actually from the 1950s they're so beat up um now what was your question are you a mod or a rocker i it's a very good question i'm a rod i'm actually rod the mocker uh i am I'm actually both. I am both mod in the sense that I'm a, I'm all three. I'm mod in the sense that I believe in things modern. I'm a rocker because I like old rock and roll, and I'm a mocker because I like taking the piss out of everything, including you. So, how did you get this position? It's not really so much as a position as uh, a vocation, because this is something I do on an honorary capacity. Uh, it's a pro bono labor of love. Um, myself and a colleague who, uh, I'm on the board of this organization, the American Cinema Tech, and there's somebody who was in charge of programming at the time, a chap called Dennis Bartok, and I were talking one night, and he was a huge fan of films from the 60s, and we were talking about it, it was 1999, and it was just around the time of the second Austin Powers movie coming out, and we suddenly became aware of the fact there were a lot of young kids who seemed to be coming along to watching the Austin Powers film, and they were fascinated by it, and they were fascinated by all that pop culture, but they didn't know the origin, they didn't know where it had all come from. So the idea occurred, hang on a moment, if we put on a festival and show some of the films from the 60s that inspired Austin Powers, so you can see where the pastiches are coming from. That was the original idea, and that was 99. Now here we are in, 19, in 2008. Now, the idea of this festival has actually become, if we could have a festival that actually celebrating the decade that actually lasts longer than the decade we're celebrating, and we're sort of at nine years, so we're like coming up to the point where we might actually surpass the 60s. But we've already become elasticized. We, the modern rockers themselves actually, as a subcult, uh, these two teenage cults really actually were 1963 to 65, 66. By 66, 67, the hippies were coming, the flower children, uh, and uh, the skinheads, the bother boys. Um, so modern rockers were actually only literally from 63 to 66. I stole the words modern rockers because it's such a great term. And we've elasticized it at first to encompass the 60s, but actually in the last nine years, we've now made it to be anything of pop culture. Um, two years ago, we had the premiere of uh, Stuart Copeland's film about the police. Stuart Copeland was the drummer in the police he made an amazing documentary. We showed that. We showed some Elvis Presley movies. Uh, we showed a couple of documentaries about brand new bands. So we've actually broadened the term modern rockers to be whatever we want it to be, which is great films that have the spirit of the 60s. They don't have to be from the 60s or about the 60s. They just simply have to have that spirit. What were you doing in the early 60s? Well, I was wearing these shoes, um, <laughs> as you can see, and uh, wearing them very well. 
Uh, what I was doing in the early 60s, um, uh, well, before I go on further, I'm going to introduce something. We're going to stop in. This is Mike Gian Greco. Now, Mike Gian Greco, hello, Mike. You're hey, on, Martin, how you're are on my you? TV. We're being watched Hi. by a man. I'm a blogger. He's a blogger, a blogger. Okay. blogger. There's actually yeah. about six, he told me 600 billion people are watching this simultaneously right, right now. now. Right now. Wow. Ma mainly in Albania. Can you speak Albanian? Very little. Me too. Um, Mike Gian Greco runs a world famous uh, bar next door. Bar, there's a bar next door here called The Pig and Whistle. Oh, that's yours? Uh, well, well, I help run it. He helps run it.